Vayikra is called Teres Kayanim. Sefer Vayikra is called Teres Kayanim. All the mitzvahs, Tete Tekahuna, are in Sefer Vayikra, which means all things connected to the higher and the holier, the purer and the more spiritual are in Sefer Vayikra. It starts a very neat. You have two and a half parshas about Karbonas. Then you have two and a half parshas about Tuma and Tara, beginning with kosher and treif, and of course treif animals and dead animals are metame. Then you have Yeldus, Tsaras, Zov and Zov and Nida and Valkeri, Tumas. That's Vayikra Tzav Shmini Taziyah Metzera. Achei Mois begins with Yom Kippur. The second half of Achei Mois and Kedoshim. So there's a lot of different things. So many different things. And you really wonder why it's in Sefer Vayikra. But uh, there are a few patterns. There's a lot of halachas of Avayt Zara. There's a lot of halachas of um, Gili Arayis. And all kinds of other stuff. Then you get to Pashat Emet. Pasha's Emir, for the most part, makes sense. That's the Pasha Vayikra. The beginning of the Pasha are the halachas of Kayhanim. We're in the Torah. You have the halachas of Kayhanim. Rishon Shani Shlishi of Pasha's Emir is all the halachas of Kayhanim. Beginning with Revi, which is tomorrow's Chitas, you have all the halachas of Yamtif. Shabbos, Yamtif, Pesach, Shvu, Sukkot, Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and also um, Luv and Esrik. The end of the parsha is a couple of more things, and one of them is lechem upon him, which of course belongs lechem upon him. It's a mitzvah, right? And I believe you also have again the parsha samaneda, the shem and lamoid is in our parsha. So parsha's emayid logically fits in teiras kehenim. It's called the sefer is called teiras kehenim. The beginning of our parsha speaks about the halachas of kohuna. The rest of the parsha speaks about the halachas of yom tif and the celebration of yom tif and so forth. Now, when we discuss the halachas of kuhuna, there are different parts to the halachas of kuhuna. Um, the first, first section, in other words, the Rishin, Sunday's chitas in our parsha, is about the halachas of Tome and Tahara. Koin is not allowed to become Tome. Yesterday and today we talked about Mumim. That a Koin who's a bound Mum is not allowed to avoid the Beis HaMikdash. An animal that's a bal mum is not allowed to be used for a carbon. When you bring a carbon, it has to be from the best. You should know. I have a class on my website on Pashas Ebed about this. L'cha'eda, you know, we live in an age of super sensitivity to what they call special people. And this is the most racist thing. You know, a koyin has one leg bigger than the other. A koyin has one eye larger than the next. A koyin has some kind of a blemish. Ah, uh-uh, ah, you're no good. Can't do the way in the base of Mikdash. You know, we live in the age of sensitivity, and these halachas are very difficult to understand. And of course, that's right, Leich Lu'um and Shasani, the Gemara. And there's, there's, there's an answer. It, it's also, it's Chasidis, it's a mind from Tzemach Tzadik and Darach Mutzisecha. It's a wonderful answer. And the answer basically comes down to Tzadik and Val Tshuva. Tzadik and Val Tshuva are different. One is not better than the other, they're just different. The Beis Amikdash is Tzadik. Outside the base of Mikdash is a Baal Tshuva. A Baal Mum represents, I like to use the word in English, a compensator. You know, we all know a person who's deaf sees better, a person who's blind hears better. That's what a Baal Tshuva is, it's a compensator. If I'm not perfect across the board, I become exceptional in certain areas. A Baal Mum is a compensator. The base of Mikdash is not about Tshuva, it's not about compensation, it's about balance. And this is the chesidus of why a Baal is not allowed to use the base of It's not chas v'shalom, he's a lesser person, but it's a different role. It's an outside the base of Mikdash role as opposed to inside the base of Mikdash role. Like a Baal and a Tzadik, like Golos and Yula and so forth. One of the, the first issue, as I mentioned to you, is Tum and Tana. A coin is not allowed to become Tummy. The din that a coin is not allowed to become Tummy, by the way, it applies only to male Kayadim. Is an atzmi is the kiddin. A koyin is not allowed to become tommy. Is not because he has to do avoid in the base of mikdash. A koyin is not allowed to become tommy. Period. Are Yisrael allowed to be tommy? You're allowed to walk around with tommy. 
You have to just be careful that when it comes to ego, when it comes to Yom Tev, you have to make yourself tired. God forbid to go to the base of Mikdash Betumah because it can be a terrible thing. The din of Tara by a koyin is be'etzim. A koyin is mechuyev to be pure. Even if there's no truma to eat, even if there's no kachim to eat, a koyin is not allowed to become tome. Moreover, a koyin who's already tome is not allowed to add to tome. Right? You people know, I'm sure you have relatives and friends who are koyinim. They don't go to Levias, except mamish for immediate relatives. They don't even go to hospitals if they're very frum. No, they're very frum. Kayan, don't go visitations to hospitals because someone can die in a hospital. But we're all to be this anyway. Every Kayan is tummy. If a Kayan went to a Levaya in the morning for a relative, and in the afternoon there's no Levaya, and he goes to a second Levaya, he's aimed at a lot of Levaya, even though he's tummy already. So there's something unique about Kayanim, that they're a class, they're a caste, they're a group of people, they're a family, that's expected to be tired always simply because they're kohen. The, the Kohanic family, the priests are b'chuyiv to maintain tahara. That's all. Even if you can't have full tahara, like Bizman Azad, they were all Tommy Mess, you're not allowed to be Mesif from the tahara. Okay? But there's a very big difference between a Kohen Godel and a Kohen Edit. The difference is a Kohen Godel. And by the way, the same is true of also of a Nazir, is never allowed to become Tommy. Never. His wife dies, his father dies, his mother dies, his brother dies, his sister dies, his son dies, his daughter dies. A Kohen Gadol is never allowed to become Tommy, even to his own family, to his immediate family. There's only one case in which a Kohen Gadol is allowed to become Tommy. And this, of course, is the case of, does anybody know what it is? He learned from Shrashi. Mes mitzvah. When a person dies and there's nobody to bury him, covered a mess count before, even the Kedusha of a Kohen Godel, Mes mitzvah is battle everything else. The halacha would be that if a Nazir and a Kohen Godel both encounter a Mes mitzvah, the Nazir should become Tommy first because his Kedusha is temporary and the Kohen Godel's Tommy Kedusha is permanent, but for a Mes mitzvah, Kohen Godel's Metame himself, otherwise a Kohen is not allowed to go to Leviathan, period. A Kohen had it has what's called the Shiva Kraivim, the seven relatives. That means a father and a mother, a brother and a sister, a son and a daughter and a wife. That's seven. In other words, two above, two equal and two below. That's it's very simple. And a wife. But the halacha is lo yitama. He's mechuyi if he himself. If a kohen says, I want to be extra frum, I'm not going to my father's lavaya. Metamin is al A kohen edit. He has to become tommy for immediate relatives. Otherwise, a coin is not allowed to become Tommy. This is the halach. Now, the whole business of Tumor and Tahar, and Tahar and Kedusha, and Kedusha and Kedusha Kadoshim, is entirely spiritual. You know, what's wrong with touching your dead body? Are you going to get dirty? You'll take a shower. It's Ruchnias. It's spiritual things. Tumor and Tahar are spiritual. Just like Kedusha and Hepacha Kedusha are spiritual. In other words, they only make sense when you accept that there are higher levels of cleanliness than simply hygiene. You're not allowed to eat dirty food. Everybody understands that. You're not allowed to eat food that's not properly salted and the blood has not been extracted and so on. But why can't I uh, go into a room? Why can't I touch an insect? A uh, uh, shedetz? Why, if this and this happened to me, I have to count seven days and go to the mikvah and wait for the sun to go down and the next day after being a guard? Why? What's wrong with me? Am I dirty? It's ruchnius. And ruchnius, the ketumas and daras, of course, are those things that umis ha'elam, mashivir alayim, the spiritual purities goyim cannot relate to. You know, in today's day and age, goyim can't even relate to taras ha'machshava. The idea of having pure thoughts, they don't see it as purity, they see it as imprisonment. They see it as a punishment, as mind control. The idea that somehow if my thoughts are going to be pure, I'm going to be a higher person, they don't understand. Allah has come of a kama. When you're talking about a ta'ra, which is not about your consciousness, but it's a spiritual ta'ra, it's beyond them. And a koyin is mechuyiv in ta'ra. And a kegod is mechuyiv even in a higher ta'ra. In the parsha, the Torah lists these halachas. The beginning of parsha's emeh, 
is lenefesh la yitama ba'ama ba'koyin is not about the kiyim le she'ere akarev elov only to immediate relatives la aviv or le'ime but l'vnoi or l'vite to his father and to his mother and to his son and to his daughter is not about the kavtomim okay there are seven she'ere akarev elov means a wife la aviv le'ime or l'vite or le'yochiv right Pasuk Aleph listed in the Pasuk Beis it listed six of the kroyim She'ere means his wife. Then it says mother and father, son and daughter, and brother. That's six. Then comes Pasuk Gimel. Vila Achese. Our class is on Pasuk Gimel. Vila Achese ha besula ha love To his sister, who is a besula, means she's never been married. Ha kreve love that's close to him. Asheloi hoisel ish means again. She's never been married. Lo yitama. To her, he's mechoyev to become tamit. A sister, separate pasuk, right? You can become tamit to your father, you can become tamit to your mother, you can become tamit to your brother, you can become tamit to your son, you can become tamit to your daughter, you can become tamit to your brother. Your sister is a bezunde pasha. Ula chayse. When it comes to your sister, how many conditions are there? Hapsula, hakreve elav, asher lo yisal ish. Three conditions. You're, you're allowed to become tamit to your sister. And if and when you become tamei to your sister, lo yitama means a mitzvah. You were choyiv to become tamei, but for some reason the Torah feels a need. You're listing seven kreivim. She'ere means a wife, and then you're listing father, mother, son, daughter, son, brother. That the sisters be by itself. Tell us. Moreover, when it comes to the sisters, all kinds of conditions. Once she marries, legabe tumentar, she's like your sister. If she's single, never been married, then you can talk to your sister. So there's a lot of curiosities about this pasuk. Okay, first of all, why is a sister in a separate pasuk? Second of all, why do you have to have three criteria? Habsula is one, hakreve love is two, and ashaloi hayfel ish is three. Any person looks at these words sees your sister, your sister, your sister. It's it's redundant. It's very repetitive. So this entire pasa gimel, as they say, is say is shouting and saying lamdeini. What's the secret? What is the reason? The Abish there, the Teda feels that when it comes to the tumor for a sister of a koyin, you have to put it in a separate pasa and you make all these conditions. And again, on the other hand, lo yitama. If she meets all the conditions, there's a chiyuv for a person to come tell me for his sister. This is the topic of tonight's class. Now. I'm plotting, so I'll tell you. I'm gonna tell you right now where this is headed. This the <laughs> the end of the story is that the koyin is the abishter and the sister is us. In other words, in, it's very difficult to explain in nigla detera, even on the level of medrash and higher levels, why you put all six kreidim in one pasuk. The sister in a separate pasuk, and you set a bunch of rules that you don't have an elastic grave. There's a zehar that says that this goes on the abishted, and it goes and the loyitam is the yid. And when you have that appreciation, you understand why it's in a separate pasuk because it's talking about a yid who's lost in golos. And forget you think lost in golos. They're, they're corrupted and they're messed up. Look, like, no, even the sister, as she is in Golos, is still Psula, and she's still Kreve Elav, and she's still Loyai Zaleish, and therefore Loyai Tama. And only the Emesis, this is the kind of Pasuk that without Pnimi Yisatayra begs. Why? What are you picking on the sister for? Why is the sister separate from all the other seven Kreivim and they set all of these rules? The Pnimi Yisatayra enriches it. And we'll see you next Hashem later in this enrichment. Let us say that we have four questions. Okay, number one, why is the sister in a separate pasuk? And number two, three, and four, why these three conditions? Besula, Kreve Elo, Asher Lo Yisoleish. And as we go through the Mefarshim, you're going to see all kinds of little details. Okay, but let's start with the Abar Benel. The Abar Benel is on page three, and the Abar Benel gives us common sense, mamish. Simple common sense. The Abba is wondering, why is a sister in separate pasuk? It's very simple. Because once a sister gets married, she has a new family. 
Page three, there's, there's a few lines of scribble. When it comes to your sister who's a psula, that means she's never been married. She has nobody else to rely on. Which is why she's close to you. Brothers and sisters are close. Until God forbid one of them gets married, they never talk again. Stop. So what's made a choysa b'sula kreveilov? Why are you becoming to to your sister? Because she's dependent upon you. She's a b'sula, she's never been married. And therefore, ha kreveilov, she feels very close to her brother. Right? And then it says, Asher lay choysa ish. She was never married before. What is the meaning of the word Asher lay choysa le ish? Le fish im. Choysa le ish. Once she gets married, her husband will bury her because she has a new best friend, so to speak. Even if she's a widow, for the most part, her husband's relatives or her children, will bury her. And therefore, only a sister that's a psula. That's never been married. Okay, to her you're allowed to become Tommy. Why? Because the Abad Manel is giving us a balabatash ahead, but there's nothing mystical, there's nothing philosophical about this. It's posh practical. A koin is to become tummy to his relatives who are dependent upon him. Your father and mother are dependent upon you, your son and your daughter are for sure dependent upon you, and for whatever reason, your brother is dependent upon you. Your sister, once she gets married, she gets other loyalties and she has other people who are loyal to her. That's the Abad Manel's word. And. It answers a lot of the questions. It explains why the sister is in a separate pasuk. It explains the words hakrevoi love. She's close to you because she's never been married. And Ashalihaisal Ish adds, even if she was married and divorced, even if she was married and widowed, she was once married, she has new friends, they'll take care of her. This is the Ababanel's Pshat. Because it's separate halachas. The other six never stop. Your father is going to be your dependent no matter what. If your father is worth a billion dollars, you still have to become Tommy to him because he depends on you. Your son is your dependent. And the same is true of your mother, and the same is true of your daughter. Okay, that's a good question. And the Abarbanel explains it. But it has to do with the fact that they're both Kayanim. Your brother is your dependent even after he gets married. Yeah? But the sister is different. Now, Let's go back to do Rashi. Your You're supposed to become Tommy to your sister who's close to you, even if she's betrothed. Your sister's engaged. Now, Arusa doesn't mean engaged. Arusa means married through with a ring. Kedushin, but no Nisuin. Today we do it at one time, but in the olden days they used to do it with a 12th month separation. Betrothed. And then going into a room alone together, which we call chuppah, is called yichud. It's called marriage. So a girl who's already betrothed, she's technically married, but she's living with her parents, and he's still in yeshiva, living with his parents. Even though she's married, you're supposed to be metama to her, because she's not connected to her husband yet, so she's still dependent upon you. Okay? Asher lo la mishkav lo yitama mitzvah. So Rashi has the same questions we have. He has no problem with the words Achaysi Abbasula. What are the words Akrai Ve'elav? Akrai Ve'elav means even if she's already engaged, if she's not yet married to Matamater. Then you have the Evan Ezra. The Evan Ezra, you see the Evan Ezra? It's directly beneath Rashi. Akrai Ve'elav, he says a very big Chiddush. Loyese Achaysi Me'ava Eim. A koyim in Matamater with sister has to be a whole sister, not a half sister. If your sister is your sister only from your father and not from your mother, and for sure, if it's only from your mother, not from your father, a coin is not allowed to be metami. So there's two dinim. A chayis absula, your unmarried sister. Hakreva, who is a complete sister. And the truth is that it's not the halach. But the point is, hakreva adds something. You understand? The chayis absula means one thing, hakreva means something else. Now on page two, you have a teras keinim. Teras keinim is a medrish of halacha. And he explains all of the words of the pasuk. Okay, explains why you have all of the words. For the Chesi Absula, it's Pratlan Anusoma Futa. This is a girl who was not married, but she was Nana, so she's a Mafuta, so she's no longer a Psula. So he's not Metamata to her anymore. 
And then he says, what about a Mukas Eitz? It's also a girl who's not a Psula. So then he adds the words, Asher loy ha'isol ish, that since she lost her Psulim through her Eitz, so he's still metamed to her. Then it says, Hakreva, the rabbi says, Harusa, that even though she's betrothed, he's still metamed to her. And a love means even though she's a begeres, which is a grown-up, and for various reasons you would think that maybe there's a different din of Tomatara, nevertheless, even a begeres, he's metamed to her. And then, of course, the final thing that Tedas Kainim says is la yitama, which means it's a mitzvah that now, if she falls under the category of a sister, that he's permitted to be metamed to her, he has a chiv to be metamed to her. I mean, tam may say balkarchei. Tedas Kainim goes through every word in the Pasuk and explains its necessity. Because the Pasuk is excluding certain sisters and including certain other sisters. And if you understand all of the little details that Tevis Kainim is bringing, you see that the Tevis Kainim, in fact, explains every single solitary word in the Pasuk. So Tevis Kainim really offers you a comprehensive answer to all of our questions. Why it's a separate Pasuk and why you have to have these three details. At Khan, Pshat, and Haloch. What we just did is... Simple, basic. Now we go deeper. And we begin, of all people, with Rabbi Yenus and Abishitz. Page 4. Rabbi Yenus and Abishitz has such an interesting new pshat. I'll tell you the punchline first, and then we'll do a little bit of reading. The punchline is, he says that originally, every time a child was born, it was male and female together. Every single child was born was twins. A Zachar and a kid. So it's like Adam and Chava. The Gemara, what does the Gemara say about Adam and Chava? Everybody knows it says in Chumish, they wish to perform surgery on Adam and Chava. And Vayiv and Satsayla, Vayyel, and So, of course, according to the movies and the Christians, the Abish took a rib of Adam and Ishna, and from the rib of Adam and Ishna, he created Chava. I don't know how to break it to you, but tzela does not mean a rib. It's push it a mistranslation. Because that's a fact. The fact that hundreds of millions of goyim decided that tzela means a rib doesn't make it into a rib. Tzela means a side, a zaito. The Gemara brings two interpretations of tzela. One interpretation is that it means a zonov, other mission had a tail. And for the vertebrae of other mission's tail, he made chava. But there's another interpretation. And the second interpretation is the one that Rashi brings in all the Rishonim bring. And that is, Dew Patufim Nivru. Adam Barishan was created with a Siamese twin. Adam and Chava were created, connected at the spine, back to back. Chava was not a rib. She was literally half of Adam. Adam Barishan was male and female. And you take a look at Chomish, this is just an interesting little piece of note. Yeah? What's the female for Ish? What's the female for Gever? Giveres. What's the female for Enish? Enusha. What's the female for Adam? Adam. Did you know that? I have biblical proof. <laughs> it says, Ze Sefer Teldes Adam, B'yayim Bano Lekim Adam, with Musa Lekim Bano Isaac, Zohar Unikeva Braam, Vayivarach Esam, Vayikra Es Shmom Adam. He called them collectively Adam. There's no female for Adam. Adam is man and woman. Adam and Chava were brother and sister. And they got married. And he brings that the first three generations, Adam, Shays, and Enesh, every single child born was born with a twin. And they were supposed to marry their twin. It actually says in Chumash, Oilam Chesed Yibona, that Abish they built the world on kindness. What was the kindness? The kindness is that he allowed brothers to marry sisters, otherwise there would have been no offspring. But the Yerushin is saying, the Yerushin and Abishit is saying, it's not the Pshat, the Yerushin permitted them to marry brothers and sisters. Every person born was automatically male and female. Then because of Avedis, this pattern stopped, and then it became also to marry a sister. In other words, the idea of a brother and a sister mystically, spiritually, is the highest concept of Palga Gufa, right? I'm sure you go to classes and you hear about Shaduchim, they talk to you about a soulmate, right? Palga Gufa, husband and a kala, husband and a wife, are the same soul that's been divided when the souls had to emerge out here Lamata, and then of course when they get married they join, and of course they don't recognize one another, because between Ganeiden, when they got married there were a few of in between, and a couple of other confusing events. 
But in originally says Yenis and the Yenis Neipshitz, other Machava were a brother and a sister. And the original model was that a brother and a sister are two halves of the same Neshama. So he explains this Pasuk this way. And he has a whole Ariches. He says like this. He says, in the Chumash it says that there were ten generations from Adam to Noach, right? Each generation says he was born, he lived a certain number of years, he had a son. Then it says he lived a whole bunch more years by Yelid Bonam He had many sons and daughters. By Adam Rishn, by Shais, and by Enish. It doesn't say the Yelid Bonam Only after Enish. First three generations of human beings, it does not say these words by Yelid Bonam He had sons and daughters. I just opened up the Chumash and it does say the Yelid Bonam I got a problem. It says here, Befedish, by Yelid Bonam Okay, but that's what he says. He says it doesn't say the Yalban Babanis. So we got a problem. I don't know what, how to resolve it. But he holds that for the first generation, first three generations, the world was, so I'm speaking, at a more spiritual level. And the ideal was for a person to marry his sister, because this is the highest level of himself of a, of a Zachar and of, of a Palge Gufa, of two halves of the same soul. And he calls them Selim and Mus. Everybody's born a Tselem and a Dmus. Tselem is the male, Dmus is the female. So if you're looking at page four, up here, near the end, this one I'm going to read with you inside. Ulekach Neman. Accordingly, it's written, Your sister is the Basula who's close to you, Dafke. How close can a brother and a sister be? Well, in the case of Adam and Chava, they share the same vertebrae, the same spine. They were mamish one. So achoyse abasula, spiritually speaking, means a brother and sister have one essence. Ki hu dmus v'tselem echad. It's one dmus and one selem. Be'etzen echad ite, they're one essence. Okay, kumta is, that when you read our pasuk, about a koyin, and the Taylor says, a koyin should become tommy to his sister. What kind of a sister is a koyin becoming tommy to? Achoyse abasula means a sister. Hakreve love means that he and she share the same neshama. What about the words Asher loy hoy ish, who's not been married to somebody else? Ki oz hoy She marries somebody else, she loses that connection to her brother. Avol kedem lozer, as long as she hasn't married somebody else, who kreve love betzelam admus, he and she are one essence. That's why it becomes Tamar. Kiki Gufi, she's like one body with him. So he says, till Enish, first three generations. In fact, they were created like this. They married their sister. Then it was changed. So now, is Rabbi Yenus and Abishitz telling us anything practical? Or is entire Pshat spiritual and mystical? It sounds like it's really irrelevant. It's just a, it's a as they say, a Pshetal. A deeper pshat. But I don't think he means that. I think he means to say that a koyim becomes tummy to his sister. And the koyim is revealing why. Why did you become tummy to your sister? That you become tummy to your father and your mother, I understand. And tummy to your son and your daughter, I understand. We can talk about the difference between brothers and sisters. Fine. But why did you become tummy to your sister? And the answer is because she's you. A brother and a sister in one essence. That's how the Ebishta created the world. And a koyin is becoming tummy to her sister, not simply because she's biologically his sister, but because they share so much spiritually. And in order to articulate that you're becoming tummy to a sister, even though she's going to get married and go to a different family and she's no longer going to be involved with you, requires the Torah to put it into a separate pasuk and say you become tummy to your sister because she's one with you so long as she's one with you. Achai sebesulim means your unmarried sister. Hakrei love doesn't mean she's only biological sister. Hakrei love means you and her share on a shama, so to speak. Asher lehoi salish. You will continue sharing this neshama until she marries. Lo yitam. So the Rabbi Yerush and Abishitz is in effect giving us a spiritual interpretation to a practical halach. 
Why when it comes to a sister, is there a difference if she was married or not married? And I guess the best way to put it is because once she gets married, she joins a different family. You know, in the real world, it's actually the other way around. Anybody knows anything about human... In, I, even in, even in Lubavitch, where everybody's all over the place. My, my wife is closer to her sisters than I am to my brothers. And it's it, just the way it is. It's very, very uncommon for a couple to get married and they should be closer to his family than to her family. Outside of Lubavitch, in non-Lubavitch circles, it's a religion. You marry a girl, you're going to live where her family lives. In communities where people stay together, not like Lubavitch, yeah, in Williamsburg, yeah, boy marries into a girl, he becomes part of her family. Not she becomes part of his. But in, in Taita, it's not that way. A girl gets married, she, she gets wings, and she joins her husband's family. So the Taita is explaining why there is a connection between a sister and a brother, and it requires these three requirements. Aches Absula, Hakreve love means she's not just caught after you because you're living in your house. You both should have the same neshama, Asher Lehoi So long as she doesn't marry. Once she marries, I suppose you could say she gives her neshama to somebody else. Lo Yitam, it's a mitzvah to become Talmiter. And I suppose if you wanted to take it deeper, you would say that in a more perfect, in a more holy world, this connection between a brother and a sister is more revealed. In a less holy world, this connection between a brother and a sister is harder to see, and harder to sense, and harder to understand. Now we get to the Hasidus. This is a mimer from the Rebbe from 1964, that means 49 years ago, which begins on the Pasuk, V'lachesi abesula akreve lo v'shoysel hish, there's a mimer like this from the Alter Rebbe. There's a mimer like this from the Rebbe Marash. And I think from another Rebbe. There's, there's more mimer than you would think on this Pasuk. And it all comes down to a Zayar. Four lines into the mimer over here, where I made the second arrow. Okay, because if you have a hard time following where I'm holding, speak up. Rab Abba Pasuk, Rab Abba begins. And he quotes a Pasuk. Who is coming back from Eden? Eden means Rome. His clothing had been made filthy because he was in a place called Botsra, Basra. For those who don't know what Botsra is, Botsra is in northern Iraq. During the Gulf War, Botsra was in the news. The Rebbe spoke about Botsra in Pashas Yisrei, Tafshin Nunbei, Nun Aleph. And then the Rebbe said to bury the Sikh, not to be Mephazimit. So the Zoyar explains this Pasuk. Which is a pasuk in Yeshaya, Shekasavzeh Koyal Gula Sidu. This pasuk is going on the final Giulo, Golo Saravias, which is called Golod Edaim. Says the Zayah, Shaaz Yilba Shakadish Baruchu Levushe Nukma. God Almighty Himself will enclose Himself in garments of vengeance. Al Edaim. The Abishter is going to get Himself dirty. Ad the Inun Levushin Yistaavun. So to speak. Klayachol, the Abish is going to put on clothes, he's going to engage with Edeim, and the Abish is going to get himself dirty. The Abish the Klayachol is going to get his Levushim dirty. Hadod, Ksev, Chol, Malbushai, Eg Olte. All my clothing have become, Eg Olte means uh, despicable, disgusting. O Messiah, and the Zayan finishes. Vekol, Kach, Loma, why is the Abish putting on Levushim? Engaging in Golas Edith to the extent that he himself is coming. The Abish has a sister who is still a Psula and she's Krave Law and she's Loyal Ish. And the Abish is becoming Tommy for her, big enough for her, La Kamala, to extract her from the God. This is the Zayah. Now, if you read the Zayah, you get nervous. Why? Because the Zayah says, for whom does Abish become Tame? For a year, there's called a Basula. How many Jews do you know like that? <laughs> right? Well, the Rebbe says, every Jew is in the category of a Chesia, Basula, Kreve, Elav, Salish. Turn the page. Bottom of the first page on page six. The Alderech, you see down here? The Alderech. Just like when Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. Hashem had to redeem us himself. Like it says in Chazal, 
And for the Kabbalists keeping score at home, Malach, Sod of Shliach, and Acher is Asiya, Yetzirah, Briyat, Silus. Kikol Bechines Elo, these four levels, Malach, Sod of Shliach, and Acher, Efshesh Hayyin, Evlayim, Batlipas, Chas Veshalom. If the Abish is going to send the Shliach into Golas to take us out, instead of us taking us out, he's going to end up stuck in Golas himself. V'lochein Hutzvach Eliyas, Yetzirah, Mitzrayim. Our original exodus from Egypt is Adiyah Kodesh Baruch Hu Bechvedi Ba'atim Hashem himself. The same is true in Mashiach. Next page, up here, yes. Umam Sheikh Bezeir Sham Bezeir continues and he says, "We call Kach Lama. Why is the Abish the big metame himself? The Ksi Valachei Sabesul Lo Yitama. The Abish is becoming Tommy for Klal Yisrael. Let's consider the Abish the sister that we hear become Tommy. Be Inin Levushe the Nukma. These garments of revenge." The zomen l'stav v'cholu that are Eibush that is making them vulnerable. They should become themselves. Tomei begino. Eibush does it for her. La come alone to stand her up. Vahainu. In other words, shasiba lekach. The reason for this, shakadosh baruch hu mashma l'satzva. Hashem lowers himself. Leislavish belevushin denukma to go into garments of vengeance. Veleidet lemokei matuma vaklipes and to descend in a place of tuma and klipes. And to destroy Klippa. Here comes a question. It says in Chazal, the Abish there is a king. Kemaimer Azal will kill him. If the Abish is a king, how could the Abish make himself come in? Is the Teres had a Zebish feel Knesset Israel? This is for the sake of Yidin. Kedeli goes Israel me Agolos to redeem the Jewish people from Golos. It says in the Medrash, "Kdei lochi basan shol Yisrael." Hashem loves Yidden so much. Shenig la Kodesh Baruch Hu b'Mokim Tumah b'Shvil Agol, and Hashem goes into a place of Tumah, though He is a Kayin to redeem him. Mashal a Kayin, because the Mashal a Kayin has Truma in the Beis Hakodesh in the cemetery. If he goes into the cemetery to get the Truma, he becomes Tumah, but he saves the Truma once and for all. Yidden are called the Eibush to Truma, and the Eibush to becomes Tumah. Two lines from the bottom of the paragraph, right here. Vezehu lo yitamba begino. Hashem becomes tome. Taiches the Rebbe. Shakadosh Baruch Hu yeded b'mokam atumah. Hashem descends to a place of tumah. B'shvil kesher for the sake of Yidden. Why? Shehi because Yidden are bechina sachesi abesula akrevi elav shalayt aliyish. We're his sisters, who's abesula, who's close to him, that was never married, and therefore becomes tome. Then there's a footnote. This footnote the Rebbe wrote himself, right here. This footnote the Rebbe wrote Mishas Mais. And the Rebbe asked him, Moedim Nikakash. The Eibish is not called a Koyen. The Eibish is called a King Godel. And a King Godel is not going to become Tommy even for his sister. So in the footnote the Rebbe answers that the Eibish did in as much as he's becoming Tommy to save Yidin is not a King Godel but a Koyen Hedid. Hashem is two Madregas. On the Madrig of the Eir Anpan is called the Kohen Hedyet. On the Madrig of Chochmor Arach Anpan is called the Kohen Godel. And in this footnote, the Rebbe says that this that Hashem becomes Tommy is only from the level of Kohen Hedyet. From the it says here, okay? However, starting on pages 8, 9, and 10 in the Sikh, of the stack, which I'm not going to teach you, but I put it here for you to learn on your own. The Rebbe has a Likut. It's very short, not so hard actually. Where the Rebbe goes deeper into this. Hashem is a Kayin, and he makes himself Tomei for Yidin, who are called Achoyse, Abbasullah, Akreva, Vashloi, Soleish. And the question is, but Hashem is not a Kayin, Hashem is a Kayin Gadol. It's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a Sikha with a twist. The bottom line is, the Rebbe says like this A Kayin had Yid, did a lot of become Tomei for his sister. A Kayin Gadol is above Tumma. He doesn't become Tommy in the first place. Not, but I just said it's a lie. Everybody knows that a Kohen Godel becomes Tommy. And the Kohen Godel is not allowed to become Tommy for the Shiva Kohen. So the Rebbe says, when it comes to a Kohen Hedyet, the Abishtir and the physical Kohen Hedyet are the same. Just as the physical Kohen Hedyet can become Tommy, and he's Mechuyiv to become Tommy for his sister, the Abishtir and the level of Zor can become Tommy and must become Tommy for even her sister. When it comes to the Abish Madrig of King God, well, the Abish is a King God, but different than the physical King God. The Abish King God means he's above the whole category of Tumah. Kum Tois, the idea that Hashem redeems the Yidin by becoming Tumah, has two levels. 
on the lower level. Right, it's really two answers. I think it's two answers. This footnote is a first answer, and the sikh is a deeper answer. Um, on the lower level, Hashem is mechuyiv to become Tommy by Havav Yidin to save them because he's a king. Yet. On the other level, where he is a king, God will spiritually, Tumah does not touch him in the first place. And the Rebbe's mocking as a marshal. It's, it's a, I, I encourage you to learn the sikh. I mean, I, I joke about it, but this, this, it's only five pages. It's not that difficult. But he says, there's two in Yonim and the Ebishter going to save Yidin. The lower in the Ebishter is Metame himself to save Yidin. And the higher in the Ebishter is above the whole business of Tum and Tara, and that's why he saved Yidin. But, girls, this is a very, very beautiful pshat. The Zayed is wonderful. And of course, above all else, it explains why to step a Pasuk. Right? If we read the beginning of Pasuk's image, that the Kayin is the Ebishter. Yeah? So the Kayin, which is Ebishter, has a father and a mother and a son and a daughter and a brother. I don't know what that means, but they're all holy people. <laughs> the sister represents Yidin who come down into this world. So that the Abishter, who's the Koyen, is becoming Tommy to his father and his mother and to his son and his daughter, makes sense because they're close. But the sister means the Neshavu comes into this world, the Abishter should say, Good riddance. The Yidin fell into the Mhazah, they did Avedis. They ended up in Golos. How can I go down and save them? So there's a separate pasuk. That even your sister. In other words, that level of Jew that goes on into this world and he can end up in Golos. And the only way to redeem him is to become Tommy as well. So the Abish that says in his Torah to the Abish that who's a Koyin, Layetama, become Tommy for her also. For whom is the Abish to becoming Tommy? For the Yidus in Golos. You know why? Because this Yidus and Golos is a Chaysi Absula. This Yidus and Golos is a Chaysi Akrevei Love. And this Yidus and Golos is a Chaysi that Lehoi Salish. How could that be? If a Yidus and Golos. Yeah. What's a Vedazara? A Vedazara is another husband, is another God. Asher Lehoi Salish. Everybody knows the Medrash. <laughs> that the Yidin, the Beis Amikdash is being destroyed and they go to a cave in Rochel and Rochel screams, why are you destroying the Beis Amikdash? They say, why am I destroying the Beis Amikdash? They brought into my house another God. So Rochel said, I did the same thing. I brought into my house my sister. You know this, right? So what does it mean that Yidin and Golos are called Hapsula, Hakreve Elo, Asher Lo and therefore you have to have a separate Pasuk in the Torah that says, that addition for the Ebesh to becoming Tommy for the Holy Nishamas and the Holy Worlds, that's to become Tommy for Achei Sab, Sula, Kreiv, Ish, who finds herself in Elam, Hazi, and Golos, because Yidin are still Sula and Kreiv, and Loi Haisal Ish. So the Maimah continues. Ube Prati Yes Yaisir. In detail. Mevayer HaKosov B'Mailas Knesset Yisro. The Pasuk explains the Mailas of Yidin. Which is why the Ebishah comes to me for Yidin. Gimel and Yonim, three things. Achayse, with the Ebishah's sister. Hakrei ve'elo, we're close to the Ebishah. And Asher lo'i ha'ezal ish, we have no relationship with any other person. Okay? Now, i got to tell you the point, okay? Achayse, the Rebbe says, is a natural love. A love between a brother and a sister is a natural love. Hakrei ve'elo, is a created love, like the love of a husband and a wife, which explains to you why I read with you the Rabbeinu Yenis Nebishet, because it's mamish the same idea. Hakreve love means like a wife. Whom do you love more, a brother and a sister, a husband and a wife? And the answer is they're very different kinds of love. A brother and a sister love each other because they're literally the same flesh and blood. A husband and a wife love each other, afalpi, they're not the same flesh and blood, they nevertheless develop a love. So the Rebbe uses the word Chiddush. The love of a brother and a sister is Teva. The love of a husband and wife is Chiddush. Says the Rebbe Achrese. The Ebi Shem Tam himself to his sister. Because he has a natural love for his sister. Hakreve love means that this sister is also his wife. Means there's a love which is created, which is a Chiddush. And the Rebbe says, those two things are Tzadik and Balchuga. Achrese Absul is a Tzadik. Natural love. The Ebi Shem loves us because we're godly. Hakrevi love is about children. Even though we were far away, we came close. And the Abish loves us as well.
Okay, so if you could look inside on page Reish Yudalid, six lines from the top, it says, A a sister, may Allah, this is a natural love, like a brother and a sister, they naturally love each other because they're one and the same. And therefore, can never be interrupted. Which is the idea of a tzaddik. Skip a few words, end of the line. They love the wish. The one that's close to you is like the idea of a wife. What's a wife? The closeness you know the wife ain't it's a teva tell that's not natural for kept. Shalakhishbahsikhola husband and wife can have also Rahman al Sana a divorce. Avala Idah Yesh Baza Maila Sakhid. This love is special because it's created, it's new. And the Rebbe says it's a special pleasure. And in the line after it says the Bhaveda who inya na veda bail chuva. It's the idea of chuva. So if we understand that the Kayim is the Abishta. And there are six Kraivim that live, I don't know, in Atsilas and in Sof, with Natsim so of course, the Abish is becoming Tommy for them. And then there's a Chaisai. A Chaisai means an Ashama that goes on to this world in Ingolas. And we all know that we're not perfect. The Abish that says in his Tater to himself, who is a Kayim, Lo Yitama, you know why? Because she's a Chaisai, that means she's a Tzadim. Or a Kraive love, she's about children. What about the last part of the Pasuk? Ashed lehoisel ish six lines in the end of the paragraph. You with me? Zakta dekoi al esav shenikir ish tzada. She has no relationship with another man, which goes on esav. So the Rebbe brings some tanya perik of dale. I know what does this mean? Shegam bezman agolos even the time of golos, and of course this means even when the Jew sins, not only when the Jew is a tzaddik, and not I don't do as about tshuva, but when the Jew is pashat arasha, she's still lehoisel ish. You know why? Even while she's sinning, she's really loyal to the Ebishti. Her pintaliyid, her neshama, is connected to the Ebishti even during the time that she's sinning. So, achoysay, and kreve love, and shaloy haizal ish, is all necessary because it's three conditions of the Yidin Golos. The Yidin Golos is a tzaddik, the Yidin Golos is a palchova, and the Yidin Golos is a rasha. And the Abish that is telling himself, the Koyin, lo yitaba. To all three, you're going to become Tommy. A Choysai, the Tzadik, you have a natural love. Hakreve, love, the Baal Tshuva, you have a Chiddush, the Golofa. Asher lo yitaba, the Jew who's sinning. Now, at this moment, he's connected to the Abish in spite of his sin. And you know the Bhagavad Gita, yeah? The head of the living Torah now also. The source of the story is Rabbi Edelman from uh, Massachusetts, from Connecticut, Shalom Edelman. He was standing at the foot of the stairs in 770, what we call upstairs, they used to call downstairs. And the Rebbe runs down from the second floor. Rabbi Goldstein would say, at least I should jump two steps at a time. The Rebbe comes down the steps, there's two bachar there, and he turns down, and he says, Kum yes, he says, I'm coming right now from Fidik, I want you to know, the Rebbe, the Chayf of Fidik, and Rebbe, anything the Fidik ever told him that he could, he would rather be repeat. Let me say, I don't keep secrets. The Fidik Rebbe tells me of art, he knows already the whole world is going to know about it. He tells him the following. He says, people have been coming to me, the Rebbe says, and bother me, how come I'm being makar of fraye? Fraye, you didn't have to push away, you didn't have to do it. And the Rebbe said he got a lot of pressure. So he went into the Fidik Rebbe and he told him this. The people come to him, but they tell you, they say, mention, and they're asking the Rebbe, you talk on the Rebbe's Makar of Raya. So the Fidik Rebbe tells the Rebbe as follows. A mama, a mother, loves her children infinitely. Believable. When a mother has many children, it's not the Pshat, she has to divide up her infinite love in a bunch of ways. She has enough love that she can love each one of them believable. The love is not diminished. What happens if one of her children is an invalid? He can't see, he can't hear, he can't walk. He's missing an arm. So although the mother loves every child infinitely, that child she loves even more. And he said, what's the name? Shall a person who doesn't see me, he says, a person who doesn't walk, then he doesn't go to shul. A person who doesn't have an arm, doesn't put on film. He says, for such a yidah, mama yibirika'ava. That's the Thai Cheshire, 
even a Jew who's so far away from the Ebishter, Bisha Sachet Hoiseb Om it his pintele is the Mebishtins. And the Ebishter tells himself, Lo Yitamu. Four lines into the paragraph. Ubishvil Gimul and Yonim Eilish of Akhnas Israel. These three ideas. Number one, Achese, which is Malas Sadikim. Number two, Akrevela, which is Malas Bani Chuba. Number three, Ashali Hoisal Ish, which means Shagam Bisha Sachet. She's doing it away this minute. And nevertheless, Hoysa Ba'am Ita Yiz Baruch, He Nilo Yitama Devish Rekham Stama Fidelim. And in the next paragraph, the Rebbe adds Nochavot. The Eibishter will not go down into this world and be Metama himself to be Mavad and Tzitzit Kedush. He will only go down to this world to save it, and take Yidin and Agolas. Once the Eibishter made himself Tama, by going down to the world to save Yidin and take Yidin and Agolas, see, he picks up the Tzitzit Kedush as well. He gives a mashal from a medrash, a person loses a few prutas. A few pennies, a person's not going to go look for a few pennies. But what happens if in addition to losing a few pennies, he also lost a diamond? So he goes to look for the diamond. Once he looks for the diamond, he picks up the pennies. Of that the Eivish is metame himself for Yidin. Once he's metame himself for Yidin, he's metame himself for Yidin. So this is the pshat. If you want to know why, you have seven kreivim, which is kreivim is metame, and the seventh is in a bazundar pasuk. Because the seventh is going on the lowest madrega of Yidin in Golos. And the Eivishter is saying to himself, especially about the Habasulo, Hakreve, Lava, Shaloy, Oisel, Ish, Lo Yitamu, Yumuchu, you have to make it a Tamu to go shlop a Yid that it goes. Of course it is. The Tzaddik, the Balchuva, and the sinner. Bishas Hachet, Hoisabam Yitay Yilbarach. Come on. That's what it says. Look inside. Even though he's a sinner, if I can't get to love him extra. Isn't it a meal for us to be compared to Hashem? Like, the connection to be a, a brother and sister? Isn't it usually like father and son and husband and wife? This father and son, this husband and wife, this mother. Listen, we call the Abish this mother also. It could be his mother, it could be his sister. Shvuas, <laughs> we say, but Tarach of the Ime. Bas Achois Ein. That's the, the, the Medish. We're the female. He's the male. I'm sorry. That's the same thing, right?